Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode, honestly, all I want to do is figure out whether the Colossus launcher is going to work. And to that end, I've moved it up ahead of the Stalwart P. And um, uh, some of you might have noticed that the first stage, the core stage of the rocket, after I dumped the boosters, it has a thrust weight ratio higher than 1. And I could have put more fuel on that, except except I should point out that that would push its burn time higher than what that uh, particular engine is rated for. So that's why I didn't do that. We are very tight on delta V, so if it turns out that we don't have enough delta V for orbit, uh, I might have to extend that stage and see what happens. But, uh, I, I mean, I don't think test flight is going to uh, be in charge of that rocket. If it is, then that engine might blow up if I do that. If it isn't, uh, then nothing will happen. We'll see. I don't know. I haven't used that engine before. Okay, so I'm going to... I think I'm just going to warp to complete and see what happens. Uh, maybe I should try rush building. We have the funds. Let me see uh, rush build and see what happens here. Okay. Well, it just... Uh, oh, okay. It uh, takes 3,546 funds and uh, it adds 10% to our progress. Hmm okay so this is the first time I'm trying this out okay uh, diminishing returns it's 10 percent compounding okay so I'll just do that much okay now we'll warp, warp to complete and see how that works okay here we are I've lined up with the moon and on the off chance that this actually works uh, keep in mind that we do have a satellite around the moon that could help us with communication so it could be it could be a good situation that we've got, but right now it's a matter of whether the launcher works. And we'll have to see about that. At least it hasn't exploded on the pad. Throttle is up. SAS is on. And who knows if I've forgotten anything. Alright, well, again, the boosters ignite. The center engine does not ignite at the start. That's going to be the first time we do that in this series. Let's see if it works. Okay, up it goes. And actually, we'll want to ignite this engine before those boosters separate, so let's reorder that. Thrust weight ratio on the ground, uh, 3.1, uh, sorry, 1.34. 3.14 would have been quite, quite fast. And also pi, but anyway. Okay, one more minute on the boosters. It looks like we're doing just fine here. Joints are holding up. And we're at 4 kilometers, 225 meters per second. Okay, we are definitely past the speed of sound. Everything still looks good. 43 seconds left on the boosters. Not entirely sure what the optimal trajectory for this one would be. Just trying something vaguely normal. Oh, I, I didn't check whether test flight works with that engine. Uh oh. Oh no, it's not tr tracking anything, so I guess it's all right. Well, it's not right, but it is it is what it is. And the reason I wondered is because Test Flight does have a little blurb in the, in the description for the engine. It says, you know, this engine only uh, can do 2 minutes and 25 seconds, and uh, we're going to blow you up otherwise, and stuff like that, but... Uh, but nope, uh, doesn't seem like it's in charge of that engine. Don't know what's up with that. We're gonna have a pretty high thrust weight ratio soon, so I want to get as horizontal as possible to get as much bang for my buck. No point going vertical, because that's just fighting against gravity for no reason. But uh, we do want to get out of the thick part of the atmosphere, so... And not overheat and all that. 
So it's a matter of finding the correct pitch to avoid the heating while getting the best benefit from our delta V. With five seconds remaining, I'll ignite the center engine. Hopefully. Okay, center engine ignition. Uh, looks good. Odd plume. Oh, we'll hold it there for now. G force is getting up there. Okay, set. Whoa. Huge pregnant pause there, real moment of suspense and all that. But uh, it looks like they're off successfully. And now we're on the core engine. All right. That was probably the diciest bit. We'll see how the rest of it goes. Well, I mean, the next problem is whether we have enough Delta V or not, ultimately. Now, technically, uh, I could have put four of the LV, uh, sorry, not LV, <laughs> different thing, LR89s, the, the what you got, uh, the Alice boosters that I have been using. I could have just put four of them on here, and it would have worked just fine, too. Um, possibly I could have even used a uh, huge cluster of sustainers. I don't know how many could fit down there. But I thought about using four of the LR89s. That would have worked. But I, I just thought this was a little bit better. Also cheaper. I think it's cheaper this way. Oh, incidentally, uh, so the configuration for these engines that I've got here are, is for the Titan II. Not the Titan 1. The Titan 1 was the one with the lower thrust and burned uh, kerosene and oxygen. This is the Titan 2, which of course launched Gemini. And the first flight for the Titan 2 was in 1962, so I, I'm aware that I'm a little bit ahead of the game as far as using this particular engine. But anyway, uh, I'm in 1955, by the way. We're, we're way ahead on everything anyway. I mean, it's not like I'm going anywhere near uh, what actually happened. Uh, I've I've been past Sputnik, I've been doing stuff that was uh, more 60-ish, 1960s, and uh, into 1961 already. We haven't gotten a Kerbal into orbit yet, so that is something we haven't done. We also haven't recovered anything yet, which is sort of important. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, altogether, I'd say that uh, we're acting about six to seven years ahead of uh, the actual clock. So you can see November 2nd, 1955. Okay, 10 more seconds here. Next one is the LR-105 sustainer, which is a center engine on the Atlas. Okay, set. Ignition. Okay, ignition is good. And we continue on. Very nice. Looks like it wants fairing separation, otherwise it's not going to show me my delta V. So let's have fairing set. I think we have enough for orbit. Yep, I think we do. Looks good. I don't think I action group the antennae, so let me activate them manually. Okay, status report. We have passed... Apoapsis, we're going down now. I think this is going to be nominal. We're very close to the water on the whole issue of getting into orbit with this stage. Um, there seems to be an imbalance between kerosene and oxygen here. I think maybe we can get more delta B out of this if I fix the mix, but we'll see. We'll see how it ends up, and maybe I've got something wrong there. I was testing quite a lot of engines with the stage, and I might not have reconfigured it properly. So the trick here is that I'm watching the vertical speed and eventually the vertical speed is going to start going up again. And what I want is that as it starts going up uh, we will 
we will see that uh, time to lap lapses uh, eventually uh, it's uh, you know it should stay around zero is what I'm gonna attempt to do I want to keep vertical speed and time to lap lapses close to zero so that we end up completing the burn at lap lapses so here uh, it stopped and now it's going back up again we've got a minute and a half left and so in a minute and a half I want to reach the point where the vertical speed is zero basically that's the idea and so I can pitch down to manage that. I'm gonna shut off this tank of hydrazine just to make sure that we don't use it. Same for the one up there. Forget if there's one in the probe. Yeah, there is. Okay, we're gonna flatten out here now. Alright, here we go. Let's see. Just gotta let it go out. Alright, 291 by 200. So that's successful. There is an imbalance. We ended up uh, 757 more kerosene than we should have. Okay, uh, I don't need to separate right now. I want to get a kick out of those little SRBs before lighting the next engine anyway though we might not be pointed in the right direction but let me plot for the moon first and then we'll wait until we get to close to the maneuver node before reorienting and doing everything else well we don't look to be in the ideal timing for anything in particular especially not that orbit but the best thing about our current arrangement is that I can relight those one kilonewton thrusters and that means that I can do a mid-course correction pretty convincingly and I think I'm gonna do that so instead of trying to make the orbit perfect right now from here I'm just going to get close to the moon and then I'm going to do a mid-course correction to get myself the kind of orbit that I want so we'll probably do that over here at the descending node and uh, we want to get the inclination right on the moon side. Maybe we won't be able to do it quite right, and then we'll have to spend more at the moon. But we have a lot of delta V. We've got 2,500 uh, meters per second on the transfer stage, and then another 2,000 to complete the transfer and get around the moon, and then another 1,000 on top. So in total right now, we're looking at 5,500 meters per second. So that should be plenty. Okay, but the uh, note I've plotted is in 51 minutes, so let's head on over there. Now, uh, we are using a little bit more electric charge than we should because we're hanging on to this stage. Probably not the best idea, but uh, we'll survive. Well, the Colossus worked, gotta say. I think, uh, frankly, my job is done today. <laughs> I mean... I'm quite happy. Okay. Um, the upper stage isn't that long. Maybe I can give myself a little bit more time here. How long is it? Five minutes and 45 seconds, and then we go on to the one kilonewton thrusters. Okay, I think we can start here. So, yeah. That's out, but I want throttle up. Okay, and probably I'm going to use SAS now. All right, uh, separation. Check that. It's very stable. Okay, uh, let's light it. There we go. All right. Off we go. at the node please and I hope we're only using uh, this hydrazine it's locked any in here no that's not locked darn it okay by the way thinking about it I could I could reduce the size of this tank and increase this stage in order to make it possible for this to do the entire Translunar injection burn. 
The only issue with that is it will that would take longer. We wouldn't dump uh, all this mass ahead of time. But yeah, that's a thought. Okay, two seconds, one second, and then the RCS will start going and we'll let it go out. Uh, takes forever though. I should definitely dump some of the hydrazine in here, we really don't need that much. Maybe 20 units will do. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't have time for this. Let's shut that off. Stage. Okay, and these guys shouldn't need any settling. They should just go ahead. So, uh, throttle up. Oh, uh, they do need the actual fuel. <laughs> okay. Weird ignition sound. All right, and we continue. It's all about the hydrazine now. Okay, we've developed a worrying trend here. Now these one kilonewton thrusters obviously don't gimbal, but the whole whole assembly is symmetric. I put solar panels on both sides for a reason. But for some reason, Smarty SS is uh, starting to oscillate and using the RCS all over the place. I'm going to turn it off and try and do it manually instead in the hope that this is really Smarty SS messing around and not something fundamentally wrong with what I've got here. So uh, here I've got it at the maneuver node and I'm no longer controlling it. And let's see if SAS can deal with this without firing the RCS. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be deviating very much. Yeah, uh, so SAS is smarter than smart ASS. Go figure. Okay, we're getting close to the final bit here. And in this case, switching between the thrusters and the RCS makes no difference at all so might as well cut it sooner rather than later and let's do a little bit of touch up let's see what's happening on the lunar side here our periapsis on the plan definitely does not look like it's pointed it definitely doesn't look like it's in communication with Earth. On the other hand, we do have this other satellite around. So that could help. Maybe. Okay. Uh, let me plot a mid-course plane change and see what we can do with that. Whether we can tilt to that orbit or if maybe it's a better idea to go for this really tight one. Definitely I'd want that one first. Though it's sort of redundant now in terms of communication. Okay, so let me work on that. Well, it looks like for 25.1 meters per second I can get it to go like this, this purple line here. And that will give us a nice little periapsis point to get into that orbit if we want to, if we can, if we have the communication. But in general it looks pretty good. So that's quite a nice change that we can do. And so yeah. Mid course corrections for the win. Alright, here we go. Let's check out our electric charge. Son? Where are you, son? There you are. Uh, 38 days, looks like. Hmm, I wonder why it's not doing what I expected it to do. Uh, are these broken? That's now a question we have to ask all the time. No, that's direct sunlight. Okay, maybe it's just the way that some of them are tilted. The estimate that we originally had wouldn't work quite right. A little bit of a roll might help, but it's probably not a big deal. I think technically uh, we probably have enough juice with this to attempt to do both, maybe? I don't know. That, that inclination change around the moon, though, would be tough. But we'd be fr pretty far out. We'd be in that high orbit. It's possible. Okay. 
I'm just gonna... Well, no, actually RCS takes forever. Alright, one kilonewton thrusters again. Um, that wasn't quite what I wanted. It's a bit higher than I want, but that could be easily fixed on the other side if we're if we're in orbit and all good otherwise. Okay, that's more of what I wanted. Not as close as I wanted, but that might be for the best. All right, we are now in lunar SOI. Oh shoot, 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 shoot! No, 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 no! I hate that those warp two buttons. I've never had this problem before. Actually, it's just today. Okay. Just want to focus on the moon. Okay, that guy is there. Potentially could help us. Looks like the periapsis has moved behind the moon. Yeah. No, actually, uh, wait, uh, that, that's, that's in communication, I think. Hmm. Now, one other plus about this is I've got local control through the Delta. It doesn't really matter that much. Actually, uh, yeah, we've got local control all the way through getting into orbit. So we don't really have to worry too much about communication. But I would like to do it legit because I really don't think this should be like that. But that's just me. Okay, that should be just about touching it. Right. Now... I will plot for orbit. Well, that looks pretty darn good if I do say so myself. Look at that. And uh, 689. Well, within our capabilities. Okay, let's try it. Yeah, this time we're in communication with Earth the whole way. Look, the moon doesn't cover it. Good times. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're close enough to the node with SAS. I don't really trust smart ASS at this point. Let's go for it. Okay, loud, loud noise coming again. Okay, here we go. We're getting into orbit, and most importantly, the proper orbit. And our apoapsis is going down nicely. And at about the right time. out there. Let's see. Yep, that's a designated orbit right there. Stability for 10 seconds and then uh, we've got this fulfilled. So after that we might as well go for the other contract. I've got 1,700 meters per second to use here and yep, yeah, we've got that one fulfilled. I don't know if, uh, yep, yeah, we can see that the funds are there. So, okay. Plotting for the other orbit. Now we've got an inclination change. We've got to bring both sides down. So the way I figure it is at periapsis here, we're going to do the inclination change and bring the apoapsis down because the apoapsis is on the side facing Earth. Uh, it's not at periapsis. Uh, I should do it. It looks like actually. Uh, Looks like our ascending and descending node are on either side. So we don't need to do it... Yeah, we don't need to do do it at periapsis or apoapsis, because... Because both of these nodes, ascending and descending nodes, should be in communication with Earth. Those And those would be the logical place to do the inclination change. And of course, we're in a circular orbit, so it's all about the same altitude anyway. So, where are we? We're there. And we're headed in that direction. So let me plot the first thing at this ascending node. And that will be pulling the other side in and correcting the inclination and we'll see how much that costs. Ah, I take it back. This descending node won't quite be in communication. Looks like the ascending node is in a better place for communication with Earth. So actually I'm going to plot from that descending node first. Okay, so this burn will take 916.7 meters per second, so we'll lose local control during it. 
and our target is uh, basically circular orbit uh, at 31.5 kilometers and uh, so that's what we're aiming for there and that'll be in communication over there so that we can pull the orbit down on this side but this takes care of the inclination change as well so we've got pretty much on target all right let's see how that works out for us okay here we are earth is in a happy place right there actually I think we're going to pass the target periapsis and continue burning in order to get to the target longitude of ascending node and inclination I hope this is alright well, now, now we're gonna be crashing into the moon this isn't safe okay periapsis was going up but now we have to stage and start this bit off let's uh, separate first Okay, now we have a signal delay, and hopefully it can stabilize. Okay, much thrust, not much sound. Actually, uh, looking at this, oops, auto saving. Uh, looking at this, maybe the other probe would have worked if I didn't deviate from the maneuver node at one point, where I was worried about these numbers going in the wrong direction. Last time I did it, I saw that the numbers weren't going where I wanted them to, and I decided to deviate from the maneuver node. Maybe that was a bad idea, and we could have gotten the delta V we need needed had I not done that. Okay, we are once again not cra Well, we're probably still crashing into the moon. Uh, the terrain is a little bit high, but uh, it looks like we're turning to safe numbers, except our inclination is 2 degrees off, which is annoying. We'll have to correct that over on the other side when we bring the current apoapsis down. Okay, and uh, I think it was 31.5 kilometers is what we were aiming for. So let's bring that down just a little bit more. Okay, I think that's a reasonable deviation right there. Okay, on to the other side, and I'll plot it first. So we'll have to do two separate things. We'll have to do, uh, well then it's better to do the inclination adjustment at descending node first, which is there. Is that going to be in view of Earth? Yeah. So we'll do that first and then bring our orbit down, because otherwise it's going to cost more. Okay, looks like it's working. Inclination is being adjusted. I need to do a few bursts to keep the periapsis where I want it, but that'll be fine. That right there should be fine. Yep, that should be excellent, in fact. Very low difference between what we were asked to do and that. Okay. Now this, this could do science... Uh, low over the moon. We haven't done much of that, but we've got the gravioli and all on this. So we could get some science back after we get this in the proper position. Seems like we have plenty of hydrazine left. So I'll do this. Uh, you see I'm burning sideways. I'm pushing myself towards the moon to drop my periapsis. It's really a silly thing to do, but uh, I don't want to make any mistakes here. 31.5 they want, 31.5 they're gonna get. Right. Okay, well, they're satisfied. Let's maintain stability. Okay, we've got that contract fulfilled as well. So, two satellite around the moon contracts fulfilled, and the Colossus a resounding success, I think you'll agree. Let's do some science. Let's see, thermometer, ah, useless, um, micrometeorite, mm, only once near to the moon, how about gravioli, or orbital perturbation experiment. Okay, this is new, Bob Lowlands, transmit data, okay. Oh, lunar seas. Okay. Alright, transmit that one. 
Okay, we got Midlands. Yay. Now maybe Highlands. Is, no, that'll be tough. Oh, wait. Uh, it always uh, comes right before Lunar Seas. It's like uh, around the edge of the sea. We get Highlands. Oh, major craters. Okay, we got major craters still looking for highlands. Okay, we're about to lose communication pretty soon and that'll do it for me on this science pass. There we go. All right, so yeah, a success, but it wouldn't have been possible to have a success on the first launch of the Colossus rocket without all the failures that we had on all the cheaper rockets. <laughs> so uh, just remember, get all those failures out of the way early on, and that will pave the way to success. All right, so uh, with, that, with that advice, hopefully holding for the rest of the series, uh, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.